Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, dear students, in this lecture we talked about the hardware solutions. We discussed about the software solutions and in the software solutions basically uh, we have two issues. One is uh, we have a high processing overhead. We got to have a high processing overhead. Okay. <clears throat> and second thing is there's the risk of logical errors. So we can have a logical errors. So uh, these two things and uh, there are many more uh, problems with the software solutions which we want to come uh, overcome. Okay, excuse me. So um, we thought that we can do our locking mechanism in a bolt in the hardware. Okay, that's what we have a hardware solution. The first which we can say a naive way of doing things is to disable the interrupts. This is, this, this is what comes in, a, in a mind that uh, uh, just disable interrupt but this can work only in a uniprocessor uh, systems and not in a multiprocessor systems the first thing is that so we can have a hardware uh, support uh, for critical section which many systems do have uh, because in a uniprocessor system we have an interleaving okay but in multiprocessor system uh, if there is a multiprocessor system <coughs> if you are disabling the interrupt say uh, for example on this processor this will not guarantee that uh, this will also disable interrupt on other processor or other processor okay <clears throat> so if uh, critical section is being done by this processor and we disable the interrupt that means this processor cannot take any more interrupts thereby having a mutual exclusion but uh, easily on this processor maybe the processor running on this processor may want to run critical section and you have not uh, actually disable interrupt on that or, or any, any other processor so so in multi-processor system uh, this is really not gonna work okay okay now how you actually uh, uh, what is an idea is uh, you want to do the critical section for any process for the process I comes in uh, so it disables interrupt so what disable interrupt means that you have uh, in a single I mean, it's a uniprocessor system say for example you want to do critical section uh, because in uniprocessor system we, had, we have an interleaving okay uh, one processor p0 is being done then a context switch occurs and then p1 is uh, doing its job on a cpu and so on we know that now um, when you are disabling interrupt that means uh, even though uh, this uh, process has its time slice over it was the time slice for p1 but uh, you can't actually uh, allocate P1 because you, ha you are disabling interrupt because what, what does that mean is you are disabling the scheduler okay the scheduler is not running anymore now so you are disabling interrupt so this is a kind of thing where uh, that means even when no other process uh, can be scheduled that means P0 uh, will run its entirety when it is doing the critical section so it will done it atomically so that means it will not be you know suspended this was a good idea but uh, it has a lot of lot of disadvantages uh, we, we saw that in a multi-process system it can't work okay and efficiency uh, efficiency of execution uh, will be degraded why because uh, <clears throat> we are saying that this processor uh, CPU is blocked with the critical section of particular process a P0 only whatever the interrupts of other like IO and other interrupts uh, if we have maybe we have system interrupts as well okay and what about those interrupts so we, we are switching off every damn thing maybe there are some critical problems in a system okay and we need to fix that maybe there is a there's some uh, you know uh, crisis situation come, come again many times we have uh, and uh, at that time we have the higher priority jobs of system uh, jobs which uh, need to be you know uh, given some priority and you have to suspend the process but you can't do it now in this scenario okay <clears throat> and so what we are saying is that we have only one system wide critical section active and we are suspending every other thing and firstly we don't like that some some process user process uh, because this kind of privilege to suspend the inter interrupts should be given to the you know system processes and we are giving that privilege to the user processes so this is not a uh, no kind of good thing to do okay and uh, second thing is um, uh, that we are saying uh, in a multiprocessor machines it, it's not a correct solution at all okay now <clears throat> now we can have uh, this kind of approach if we have a kernel 
trying to fix its race condition because we can have a race condition in a kernel as well we can have inside the kernel there could be race condition okay in the in that scenario because the kernel is a system process and if it has a privilege to disable the interrupts it's kind of good we can do that but to have this kind of privilege to a user process is not going to work because that can um, be easily you know some kind of a virus program which is disabling the interrupt say for example your process is not is just pretending that is a critical section so it, it switches off the interrupt that means none other process even your antivirus or whatever it is can't work at all because this process is the boss so you are giving it to it, it, it to the boss so it's it's holding everything so it can uh, maybe some virus program or maybe some malicious program or you you write a program for example to loot a bank uh, this is your dream uh, your, your dream gonna come true okay so definitely we are not gonna do this this is this is a bad solution okay so then what we're gonna do so that's why we move forward and we see something different now what we have is uh, the special machine instructions so we are actually giving support in the instruction set, uh, instruction set architecture so um, uh, what typically we are trying to do is uh, we have uh, some kind of loop and then we say that hey you're gonna acquire the lock here and then when you have a lock you can have a critical section then uh, you can release that lock is it this is the main idea because uh, if we say interrupting this uh, uh, you know disabling the interrupts and what will happen by that is uh, we are actually uh, having a contention here with a critical section with some process okay uh, so maybe p0 and p1 and p2 they are trying to access the critical section so we need to have a mutual exclusion between them whatever the other processes which do not have to do anything with the critical section say p4 p3 p4 p5 and other uh, guys which have nothing to do with the uh, this critical section so you are disabling everything so that was not a good idea at all now we what we are trying to do here is that we want this lock mechanism which we did in a software actually we had some uh, flags and some turns like in Decker algorithm or Peterson's algorithm and so on and we saw that we did it in a software and in a software we can have a lot of errors and we have especially the busy wait uh, we were uh, waiting and uh, wasting CPU cycle a lot of time was wasted because of that busy wait and in fact we, we're not gonna remove that weight here uh, in fact we're gonna do something else okay uh, that may be in a sum fours and so on later on we will talk th uh, those things but here we what we are trying to do is we are trying to build this lock mechanism uh, inside the uh, inside the a, a, as an instruction set architecture as an instruction uh, we want to build it uh, in hardware that's what we want to do so that's why we say modern machines provide special atomic hardware instructions they are atomic okay what does atomic means they are non interruptible you can't interrupt them that's why we say them in uh, you know they can have a multiple steps say particular instruction this lock instruction may have say one two three so the problem could have in a software uh, software solutions was that you can preempt here uh, if you preempt when you're done this one say for example you have tested the lock and you are not set your flag and then you uh, if you are preempted that that can create a problem so we say this lock uh, these instructions set will be done as a one instruction okay <clears throat> so performed as a single instruction cycle this will be done in a just one instruction cycle that means you can't be preempted that means it has to be done atomically okay now this uh, locking or unlocking may be to access uh, the memory location okay uh, so that memory location is blocked for any other instruction right so that means while you are trying to uh, you know uh, th these atomic instructions for example you have a memory location you are say whatever it has it is a one or is it false or is it true whatever it is if you are trying to first test it say for example you want to test it uh, for true or false if it is say for example false and you want to set it to true okay then you want to set it to true 
but what happens is atomically means this this instruction is not two instruction taken as a two instruction but as, but is done in a single instruction cycle that's what we say this uh, instruction has to be atomic that means this is to be done in a one cycle so that there will be no problem in acquiring the lock similarly we could have say for example two memory locations and um, the contents of these two memory locations are to be interchanged swap depending on certain uh, conditions we're going to swap the contents of the two and uh, uh, this again is to be done in a single step okay so uh, according to these we have actually uh, two main uh, hardware solutions one is it is test and set uh, and second one is compare and swap okay so let's try to first see what is this uh, test and set instruction so there are special machine instructions okay uh, the test and set now in a test uh, and set an instruction this is actually a uh, uh, this is a you know hardware uh, instruction so this is not like this this is just a definition on a high level language uh, inside it's actually in a machine language okay uh, actually in the assembly language in instruction set uh, it is in the isa okay so this is going to be not in a the c language so we are defining it uh, in a c language here so what how to see how this test and set actually work so we have a uh, method here test and set what it does is we have a local variable a lock variable okay some lock so what we are saying is typically that you acquire a lock then you are uh, want to access the critical section then you can execute a section and then you release a lock right this is what we do so how are we going to acquire lock and we just uh, see uh, we 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 have a boolean variable the lock variable so we have a lock variable it's a boolean can take true or a false so whatever it is uh, that is passed to this test and set when we call it we will just see uh, in a program how how when when we call it actually to lock um, so we are saying that that a lock variable okay is sent whatever it is it it, it, it can have a true or false values that is mm, we are saying m person lock that means we are working uh, uh, this is possible reference that means we are working exactly on the lock variable itself okay so it's not a copy a copy to this lock rather we are working on the lock variable itself so whatever the value is that's passed it into this lock here okay this is possible reference and then when we have a local a temporary variable that's also the boolean that holds this value whatever the value is at that time okay so say for example it was firstly false because uh, we have not yet locked and no process has come so it was false so that false is copied into the temp now into this lock we are saying true that means we are locking it okay we are saying true that means we want to lock this is our int uh, our intention to access the critical section so we are locking it by putting true into the lock and but whatever we are returning is the old value that is the temp the temp has the false this is what we return okay well, let's try to see how this work in our program so before that i just repeat that we have a uh, the, the global variable lock which every process try to see okay process p1 p2 any process comes in before executing the section it will test this lock variable and it sets as well important thing is this testing and setting okay we're not only testing it we are also setting it here we are setting it the lock variable to true in this case okay and this is atomic this is done in a single instruction okay this can be done when we build it in a hardware so this instruction can be easily be done atomically that's not a problem here okay because problem occurs if we do it uh, non atomically that means we first just set it test it and uh, and th then we set it M maybe we have a suspension preemption in between and that can create a problem but this is done in atomic fashion so let's see how this works now now uh, this is how we actually use our test and set say for example we have some uh, a boolean variable lock which is initially false because no one has actually accessed it say this is that boolean this is a shared variable called lock okay 
and this is in the beginning false okay now process p1 comes in or some other process comes in uh, this is the p of i uh, any process comes in p1 say if we have uh, firstly the p1 comes in okay the later on p2 may come on or maybe the p1 uh, or p2 come come simultaneously or anything can happen okay now we are running our infinite uh, while loop this is what we do uh, while true do begin kind of stuff the same thing but this is the typical uh, programming language c language otherwise you could say in a general language while true do begin so we are saying uh, here again a loop while test and set okay and what we are sending it is the lock variable okay so if we see here okay here we are sending the lock whatever the lock has that's a false we're sending it to the lock okay the false and that false is going into the temp so we have a temp variable here uh, in this case we have a temp not here say this is the temp and it has now the false because lock had a false and the lock itself is switch it to true because we are locking it okay and what we are returning is false so false comes back out of this instruction the false comes back as a uh, uh, you know uh, because it returns so it evaluates this whole function evaluates to false so while false means it will come out of this while loop that because there is a terminator as you could see uh, that means there is no body of the while so uh, so it, 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 it can you know uh, loop around here within this um, function only so when it comes evaluates to false then it comes out of the while loop so it's gonna do the critical section okay now maybe another process comes in say p2 comes in now okay and uh, it is also executing the same piece of code so it al also runs this code while test and set and sends the lock but the, what is the lock this time this is true now this time true goes to this method okay while boolean ampersand lock so lock will have the true value okay that true value will be put into the temp so temp will have a true value now because of p2 okay now lock is assigned the true so it is true so it will be again assigned true so there no effect in a lock but what is returned is a temp okay so what has temp in it temp in it ha is, is a true so that means this will return now here true so while is true so it is going to loop here okay so it's going to loop here it's not going to come out of this while loop because it has come the true so it will loop until okay this lock whatever we are returning is not false so that means until p1 is executing the critical section no other process maybe p2 or p3 now comes in it again uh, runs this piece of code so it says while test and set lock lock is true true goes here so uh, that true value goes into the temp and uh, lock will have it was true now it will again be true and whatever return is the true that means this while loop will be true while true means it's gonna run it's gonna loop so it is spin here it will spin here okay that's why i say that that spin uh, uh no lock or wait uh, you know busy wait loop is still here because the other processes all processes which are trying to execute this piece of code or has to go for critical section will now spin here in this while loop right only when uh, the p1 finishes critical section it will release the lock what it, it does it makes the lock false the moment lock becomes a false now here you see lock becomes false okay because uh, it will st again run the while loop because if p2 was coming in it uh, it evaluated this test and set and uh, it evaluated true then with while goes again uh, with the test and set and sends lock with the true value and the same thing will happen as a true okay because true will go into the temp and then temp will return with the true right so it will again run the test and set again run the test and set in a in a in a, in a loop right so the moment uh, lock goes to false, now uh, one process out of them can access uh, uh, because everybody is spinning. So uh, some process gets a chance because maybe this uh, process gets, a, you know, uh, it's time slice. It, it, it will see the lock is false. So false will go to the temp, but lock becomes true again. And temp is returned, that means false for this process only. Uh, the, it will evaluate to false and it will come to the while loop and do the critical section but the rest of the guys when they get a time slice they will try to execute for them the lock is true now okay and same thing will happen with the other other guys so this is how mutual exclusion will be 
uh, met here there will be there's a perfect mutex between all of these uh, processes using this test and set okay now also when uh, you are done okay then uh, you can uh, you can do your manual section that's not a problem uh, with that okay only problem was the critical section you need to have a lock so this is done by the test and set so this test and set uh, is uh, doing wonderful job of mutual exclusion okay but it has a problem because we said uh, that our uh, mutual exclusion uh, solution should have three things one is the mutex which is it doing one is the progress this again uh, this solution uh, works for the progress condition as well it satisfies the progress condition but what about the bounded weighting okay so bounding weighting is not there uh, what does that mean bounded weighting is not there there is a couple of scenarios if you look at the couple of scenarios here say for, for example process one comes in okay we understood that uh, it will uh, do the test and set so basically when the lock is firstly false okay it will do it will chuck the lock it is false and it will return uh, that false but in uh, turn it makes the lock true okay uh, so it makes lock true for the other guys but for itself it comes back with the false uh, because return temp is a false that will come out of the while loop and do uh, do the critical section okay and the other guy if comes in it finds the lock true so it tests it uh, to be true and that true will be returned here okay uh, and it will stay in this while loop forever okay now uh, what will happen is for example um, we say that uh, we have given some chunk of time say four units of time is given to this process p0 p1 for example now executing critical section then p2 uh, will be given four blocks uh, say for example it, it was doing its critical section okay and uh, say this much of thing is a critical section and uh, it's four block unit is finished here right okay uh, when, it, when, it, when, it, when it did this much of uh, critical section and this much is to be done okay and it's timed out because it's 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 clock is over now when it, when it is timed out what will be happen the other process p2 will be loaded and p2 will execute uh, this line of code for example it was here uh, but it is stuck it will be stuck in it so in, in its whole four unit of time it will be doing busy waiting uh, this thing so because it for this the lock is true so it will wait uh, it will spend all its four unit of time in doing nothing but waiting right now uh, maybe uh, now the time slice is given to the p3 and p4 p3 again the four unit of time is spent in the busy waiting because lock is true you can't because mutual exclusion means uh, when one process is doing critical section no other process can do it okay so they all whatever the process say for example, 10 processes here they all have to wait uh, in this uh, while loop so what they are doing is they are wasting the CPU cycles uh, that's why the busy wait loop is the biggest problem of the software solution as well as the hardware solution we fix it uh, in the semaphores and all we will see them in the next uh, video lectures but here I'm not talking about the busy wait loop but I'm talking something else that is the bounded waiting okay so what will happen now is uh, say now the p1 will get its, its uh, in round robin fashion for example it will get its four time slice again so it can now go from this position onwards okay now say for it, it did it in a one uh, unit of time so it has still three unit of time left okay so uh, it's uh, it makes its lock false because it is done with the critical section now it make its lock false okay and it has started doing its manual section say for example now again uh, so say it takes again a one unit of time here so two unit of time has been spent so two unit is left with the p1 so p1 still left with the two unit of time now maybe it will come back and start it want to do again the critical section okay so it will come back here and lock is false this time because he has made the false lock is false so he'll make it true and he will enter into the critical section okay again maybe again the same thing happens it does this much of time it is timed out other guys will be waiting here okay when it, when the p1 gets, gets back its time slice and it uh, it finishes critical section makes the lock false but at that moment uh, time slice uh, is with the p1 only okay so that means it can come back again and again 
do the critical section and others are varying varying and varying so this is the bounded varying is not met at all or another scenario is that say for example p1 was uh, doing the critical section okay other uh, processes p2 p3 p4 now p2 came the after that p3 came after that p4 came they are all varied and maybe another p5 came and uh, when the p5 came just came in and tried to execute this uh, stuff okay and at that moment uh, say for example p2 has released the lock okay now these guys uh, have come uh, you know earlier uh, much earlier than the p5 maybe they have waiting for long but now p5 will execute the critical section and not these guys so there may be the uh, you know problem of starvation also okay so uh, we need to uh, you know uh, have the bounded waiting in this algorithm then we need to a little bit modify it okay so we're going to modify it so that it will have the bounded waiting property as well so here what we are uh, done is we have modified this algorithm and uh, we see here there is a waiting array okay this will actually uh, help us uh, to see if somebody else is waiting then I should not be doing it again the critical section again so we will implant you know uh, actually the bounded waiting uh, condition also in the mutual exclusion of test and set okay so we a waiting is an array for example it is an array okay it's a boolean array so how much process we have p0 p1 p2 and p3 for example so when p0 comes in it makes its uh, you know true it's waiting of i it makes it true and there's a local variable flag also we have a lock variable which is a global variable which will be you know everybody will test the lock okay and we have its own variable flag okay when you are intended to the critical section you will make it true so p0 will make its own flag true so every process will have its own local variable flag you have to make it true okay now uh, what we are doing is we are saying while waiting of i if we, if we say for example the p0 has come up right now the p0 has come up and uh, uh, lock will be false in the beginning we know that okay and test and set is the same uh, which was there okay if you are not uh, you know getting it uh, just stop the video watch the test and set again so uh, we say that uh, lock variable will be false in the beginning and you have made your flag your your local variable flag as true that means you want to do the critical section and you are also waiting of i that you are you are waiting block is also made the true now we are saying while waiting of i if waiting of i is true and flag is true so you have both are true isn't it uh, this is uh, the f the flag is true as in waiting if I true that's you, you should be doing critical section technically so firstly you will have the test and set so that maybe you will see somebody else has locked it or not so you will use the person lock because lock is false this time so test and set will do what it will uh, return the false okay we know by the test and set when we have uh, when we send something to the test and set it will uh, uh, send same thing back okay but make the lock true is it so what it will do, do here technically is uh, simple thing is that it will set make the lock true but send what was the locks value that is false back to the flag so while is this much of loop is while okay one statement because if we don't have a brace that means one statement is the while now here because no other process has come up so that means lock was false and uh, that flag will become false and lock itself becomes true okay so that lock will become true for other process if other process comes and they will find the lock true but the flag has become false so it will break out of this while loop because next next turn because in next iteration of a while loop the flag has become false whatever the waiting i is it doesn't matter because flag is become false will come out of the while loop it will make make waiting as well as false so it's making waiting false here and flag has become also the false of it the process p0 i'm talking about now it can do the critical section now it enters into the critical section in the meantime if other process comes in okay say for the p1 comes in it will make its waiting true so it will make its waiting true okay and it will make its own flag say its flag is here that is also true and it will see is waiting true and flag true yeah it is it will test and set at the lock 
Yeah, because log is true now because log is a global variable okay uh, so p1 also access the same local uh, global variable log so it is false here so when if, if it is false okay uh, it, it, uh, sorry it's true here this time because this p0 has made the log true so what will happen here the true will be returned back to the flag okay and lock always be, uh, remains the true okay so there will be no effect on a lock but the flag becomes true so it will stay true so waiting is true flag is true it will stay ever waiting in this while loop so all of the process come now come they will all stay in this busy wait busy uh, wait, you know waiting busily here in a while loop right now when you are done with critical section now we saw that in the last time that you had a critical section and you had four units of time you time it out here say for example your four units of time slice is timed out here but you you have to do this much of critical section still okay and other processes if they get the time slice they'll be only waiting here not doing any any anything so wasting cpu time as well uh, and also uh, but 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 not executing the critical section so mutual exclusion is uh, here um, um, that's being done here by this algorithm not a problem but busy wait loop uh, remains there so we have to do it so so that other guys not access the critical section but we'll, we'll find the solutions later on uh, for this also for the time being I'm saying for the boundary rating that uh, now the p0 gets the time again okay now it uh, starts this p0 starts doing the rest of the critical section now it does the this exit section this was the entry section this is the critical section this is the exit section in exit section what it does is it has to see if somebody else was waiting when I come say for example p1 has come okay so this is the guy which was uh, true and it's waiting here other guys may also be there uh, so we have to run a loop from uh, j whatever the my process is I'm I'm here okay so my 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 value is say for example here index 0 I'm at a 0 okay uh, so I value is 0 so I means the process which is executing a critical section so right now p0 was executing a critical section so that means uh, the I value is 0 okay uh, so I value is 0 so I have to run from 0 up to the end okay uh, and I, I can come back also so because if say for example I was talking about the p1 so if say for example p1 came the first other guys came uh, in the end so I will go this way and then I come back this way so I go this way and then come back here until I don't met myself okay until the j doesn't become the i okay so I, th that means I was one if if I'm talking p1 k came first so that means I'm you know, the process which is doing the critical section if it was p1 then I was one so I will go for one two three and come back to the zero again that's why I, what person does here it gets me like uh, like in a you know, circular queues it's the same in a circular queue uh, so it comes back here right now uh, we don't have to uh, we, in our case it was the p0 who came first so it will start from the i equals to zero plus one that means this guy and what it does technically is to see if anybody was waiting so if anybody was waiting that means I should not be doing the critical section again okay that's uh, what I want to refrain P P0 from doing the critical section again if some other process was waiting okay so uh, rather P0 should wait uh, for those processes to finish if they are done then and only then it can uh, execute its critical section again now how, to, how it will do what it will do is it will run a loop uh, it will have a j is equal to i plus one percent n. Uh, so what it does is it uh, it makes uh, i plus one that is this guy that is zero plus one is one. So that's I'm talking about p. And if we have a so percent n will doesn't make any difference. It will make at the end only difference because if we say we have the one two three four, so we have this much. Okay. If I divide uh, one by four or zero is zero and what's the remainder one so it will be same as this thing if it is two because I'm saying person means modulus operator that is the remainder divide whatever this is divided by n while whatever the remainder is that will take up the j value now say for example here I am having two so if I divide uh, two with the four four zero zero that is two that doesn't make any difference okay if it is three it doesn't make any difference four zero zero that is three remainder is three so j will hold the three value 
But when it is a last value, 4, that's 4, 1, 4, it will become, remainder will become 0. That will, it, it will come back to the beginning. Okay, it will come back to the beginning. If it is end, it will come back to the beginning. Okay? Okay. So we will run our loop here while j not equal to i, unless the j doesn't come back to the i. Okay, where the i was. So I will go this way and then come back this way. So until they are not same, so and not varying j. That means there is no more varying j. So it's, say in this case, uh, my j value is now one. Okay, because I'm talking of the, or uh, talking of the p one. Okay, the i value was of the p zero zero. So I incremented my j. I go forward and j becomes this guy one. And I'm seeing that j is not equal to i because this is not myself. This is some other guy. That is p zero p one process. And is it varying j true or not? Okay, if it's varying j is true, is one thing. That means I should stop. Is it? I'm saying not varying j. That means varying j is not true. But that's not uh, that's a false here, right? So what we are saying technically here is that if I go forward and try and see if there is some uh, process j, maybe there is no process uh, in a varying. What should I do? I should go for a critical section again, right? So that will happen that if uh, that process I'm talking about here, one process, is not varying. In fact, it's here uh, false because it is varying. So say, for example, there was no process varying, okay? So what will happen? I will not start uh, make a conclusion that I should do critical section or that I should move forward to see this guy. Is this varying or not? If this was not, maybe, maybe this was true. Maybe this was true. So that's why I make my j plus 1 percent n. Percent n, you understood that I can come back and see on a back if there are some processes before me who may be varying, right? Okay. Now, if that is the case and I have done all things, so that means I will come in a reverse and come back to the position same I am. Say, for example, on this side, everybody was false. Where I go on chuck in, chuck in, chuck in and come back here and j becomes equals to i. So i is 0, j also becomes 0. So that means no else, no other guy was varied. Okay, then I can make a lock false. But in this case, since the P1 has come, it has made itself true. So it is not uh, here uh, true. So this will not run at all. Okay, so this is not going to, going to run. So what will happen is that means will this if run? Because it will, it will come out of the while loop because this is false. Even though j is not equal to i, j is 1, i is 0, okay, i is the process p0 which was trying to execute, which was, uh, which has finished uh, its critical section and now uh, uh, j is the 1 which is of p1, okay. We are saying not varying j, that uh, varying j is not true, but that's false, it is true. So it will come out of the while loop, so it will not execute this thing, okay, so rather it will chuck this thing, if j equal equal to i, is j equal to i? No, it's not, right? So I will not make lock false, rather I will make waiting of that j. I will make waiting of that j. What is the j? That is the one. That means I am making waiting of the process p1 false. So I'm making, uh, let me change the pen now here. One second. Um, how do you make it a uh, different pen? Okay. So I am making this as false. P0 is making this guy as a false now, varying. So what will happen by that? What will happen is if, for example, I finish it executing, uh, now P0 finish it, it makes varying J, but it doesn't make lock true, lock false. Lock still is true, okay? Lock still is true. And it is done with the uh, with, with this whole code. Maybe it comes again. It, its time slice is not over. It comes again. Now it makes its varying true. So it makes its varying true. It makes its flag true, okay, and it goes here. While varying and flag are both true, yes, they are, and it will run this test and set because lock is true. It's not false, right? It's true, so it can't execute because when it's true, lock is true, that means uh, it, it, it will do what? It will return flag as true, right? and lock will stay true because test and set will make lock true and it will come back return the flag to be true and that means it will stay in this way because this while loop is true so it will stay in this while loop 
So process P0 stays in a while loop. Now say for example after some time sibling here its time uh, slice is over. Now P1 gets its chance. What will happen with the P1? The P1 was uh, P1 was busy waiting here, right? Because P0 was P1 had come when the P0 was executing critical section, so it was busy waiting here, right? Now what will happen is uh, it it will run this while loop again while waiting of I because that process P1 has now its flag waiting false. So when this is false, it will come out of the while loop while loop, right? Okay, and it will make its waiting false. That's again that, that that was there, so no need to do that. But you can do it, but it can do the critical section now. So lock was not released. Nobody will release the lock, but still it can do the critical section now, and it does the same thing. If some in the meantime some other process come in, okay, it will make it will it will uh, run a loop from this very location uh, from this this side on. If somebody is waiting here. So it will make their uh, it, it will say it will make the nearest ones uh, waiting as false, so that that guy can enter into the critical section, break out of this while loop. If nobody else has come, uh, because of person and it comes back here to the P zero, which is uh, which is waiting, it will make its waiting as false here, right? So that now P zero can access the critical section and so on. Okay. Uh, say for example now no process is left uh, uh, no process come in so it will come here because when it uh, runs this while loop it will come back to itself i becomes j so it will make lock as false right it will make lock as false and so on so by this uh, we are not only executing the mutual exclusion but also the bounded rating now those processes say for example uh, some process this, this process has come in after this after this process has come in so definitely first this process will execute the section if because this process will make its nearest ones waiting as true waiting as false so that that process will uh, get out of it uh, out of the while loop not the process which has come come later right right so technically we are saying that the processes which has come first if some process P0 executing critical section, if P1, P2, P3, they have come up in this order, then P1 will this algorithm will make sure the P1 will after this execute critical section, even though P0, P0 has to wait for all these. Okay, then P2 will execute, then P3 will execute, then and only then P0 can execute. Right? So this is uh, working wonderfully well. Only drawback we now here is the sipping wait. Okay, we are waiting and spin in a spin lock. Okay, we are spinning and spinning and spinning and wasting our CPU time. Now, uh, same as test and set, we have a second uh, here special master instruction called compare. Okay, and swap. So compare and swap is our next special instructions, where we can have. Uh, the two, uh, you know, memory variable A and B, for example, we are passing by reference these two uh, Boolean variables. And then what we, what we are doing is we create a temporary variable which holds the value of A and A goes to B and B goes to temp. That means we are doing simple swapping, which we uh, know, which everybody knows in a programming language, how to do swapping. This is being done here. So how? let us see now how this will be used for mutual exclusion. But one thing should be remembered that this swapping is a special machine instruction. Uh, for example, we got the uh, exchange instruction. Uh, we have done in assembly language uh, the XCHG, which does a swapping. This is this kind of an instruction, which is done atomically. That's important. We have to do it atomically. That we do. We ha we are actually. Uh, accessing two memory variables it's not like that we just uh, access them in a separate way whenever we have to do a swap it will be done by the hardware uh, because we have a special instruction for it which will do it in atomically it's kind of same uh, like a test and set but a little bit you know different in a way of uh, implementation uh, we have a local variable flag and uh, a global variable lock okay this is our lock variable and this is our local uh, say p0 comes in it has a local variable flag so if it has an intention to do critical section it will make it true 
okay and flag in the beginning is false so it's it's uh, it's free now you set your flag variable to true okay and now you're chucking the flag yeah it is true so you can do the, the this line of code because this is with the flag okay and what you do is you swap in swap we know we are swapping the two right but only thing is that is done atomically okay because we have a special machine instruction for it now lock has a false that will go into the flag so it will become false and it was true so lock will become true so lock will hold the true and flag will be now false now when the flag is false and the next iteration while false it will come out of the loop it will start doing critical section okay now in the p meantime p1 uh, comes in so what it, and it does the same piece of code it will make its flag true and it says why flag is true okay flag is true yes so it will swap between this guy and this guy now now, now uh, the lock is true okay now the lock is true here uh, for the second uh, guys now when you swap between the flag of the p1 and the lock they are both true so swapping doesn't make any difference okay so flag will stay true so it will stay forever in this loop until the flag does not become false right so this will become only false when the lock is false okay so what will happen in the meantime if the p2 comes in it will make its flag true and it compare with the lock again uh, in the swapping no, nothing no difference will be there because lock is true flag is true so it will stay in this while loop so all other processes will stay in the while loop forever okay in the meantime p0 finishes critical section it makes lock false the moment it makes lock false uh, the the process which gets the time slice at that moment okay will get a break out of this loop because lock is false the false will go to the flag okay and lock will be true okay because flag flag was true so lock will be true and uh, the flag will be false of that particular uh, process but it is not necessarily p1 it may be anyone who has got a time slice at that time okay so that will break out of this while loop and start doing critical section for the rest of the guys will be waiting in this while loop so again we have a bounded waiting problem because if some process are waiting for a long it is it is uh, the luck if uh, the moment p0 releases the lock okay um, the, the the process which has got the time slice at that moment okay we'll get the we'll, we'll come out of the while loop and start doing critical section okay so we can modify this as well using our waiting array right boolean array waiting waiting of i right so you can implement same thing here and that is gonna be your exercise is it so work it out do it you can do it no problem and in the meantime i'm gonna take a cup of tea okay i need really a cup of tea so um anyways before we can uh, jump uh, into our next video we need to understand this busy baiting which is wasting our CPU time, precious CPU time, has to be fixed now. Okay? So that will be in our next lecture. To, uh, so that comes to the, the end of this lecture. So always keep smiling. And until next time, Masalama.